morning. My name is Leanne Hadley. I'm the online pastor for Christ Church United Methodist, and I just want to take a moment to welcome you to worship today. This is Mother's Day, and for all of you mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. For those of you who um, have a mother and have wished her a happy Mother's Day, I know this is a good day for you. And for those of you who have lost your mother, um, I know that today can be a mixed joy and a blessing for you. So um, I have lost my mother many years ago and it's a funny thing no matter how long your mother is gone you still remember her on Mother's Day and so I'm having a bittersweet day um, and and whether you're having a joyful day or bittersweet day or sad day whatever on this Mother's Day I'm just glad that we're together and I pray that you feel God's presence thank you for being here and worshiping one of the things I love about worship so much is that we bring ourselves no matter where we're at um, whatever we're feeling and we just bring ourselves and we know that in that space God will be so um, I hope that you feel God's presence this morning and that you have a beautiful worship service please join us after the service for Cafe Connect um, I'll be there and I'd love to chat with you and just say good morning so happy Mother's Day have a great worship service and thank you for being here Good morning. Good morning. Blessed to see you here this morning. I'm Liz Curtis Higgs, Director of Adult Faith Formation here at Christ Church. Grateful to serve as your liturgist this morning on our sixth Sunday of Easter. This is Have a Heart for Seniors Sunday, and later in the service, you'll hear more about that from Craig Reynolds. It is also, friends, it is Mother's Day. So. Motherhood might be best summed up in the words of Charles Dickens. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It's a day filled with a complex mix of emotions for many of us. Well, whatever this Mother's Day holds for you, you are in the right place. The place where the God who made you and the God who loves you and the God who welcomes you exactly as you are. Whether you're joining us online or in person, we're so glad you're here. Next Sunday is Senior, that is in High School Senior Blessing Sunday. For both services, your Christchurch family wants to recognize and celebrate this important life event with our high school seniors and their parents. And if you'd like to participate, please sign up today, ccum.net slash youth, because tomorrow is the deadline for that. Well, the prelude you are about to hear was gifted to the Carillon Ringers in loving memory of Debbie Yockey's parents, Kay and Jack Wetzel, by Steve and Debbie Yaki and their families. And now, friends, let's still our hearts and our minds as we prepare to worship the Lord with gladness and come before Him with joyful song. Thank you. 
this time, it is my honor to invite the Cook family to come to the baptismal pool for baptism. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift to us, offered to us without price. Today we welcome Molly Kate Cook and Max Jameson Cook to the baptismal pool as candidates for baptism. Brittany and Dustin, if you haven't noticed, your kids have grown up so quickly. I know that you are so proud of them today. Um, I have some questions for you before their baptism. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say, I do. And will you continue to nurture Molly, Kate, and Max in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, say, we will. Molly, Kate, and Max. I don't think there is a nicer gift you could ever give your mother on Mother's Day than to be baptized. <laughs> what a precious thing you are doing. I now ask the two of you, do you accept Jesus and do you want to be baptized today? And do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Mm -hmm. And will you nurture one another in the Christian life and include Molly Cade and Max before you in your care? With, With God's, God's help, help, we will, we will proclaim, proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround them with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us pray. Eternal God, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and the ones who receive it. May this water be drops of your mercy and a reminder of your justice and righteousness. Let this water renew Mary Kate and Max in the resurrection. Molly, Kate, and Max in the resurrection power of Jesus and make him long for your coming reign. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, are you ready? Katie, ready? Here we go. Molly Kate, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Molly Kate, the Holy Spirit, work within you that being born of water in the Spirit, you may remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So proud of you. Congratulations. <laughs> I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Max, the Holy Spirit, work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you may remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Members of the household of God, I commend to your love and care Molly, Kate, and Max, whom we this day recognize as members of the family of God. Will you endeavor so to live 
that Molly, Kate, and Max may grow in the knowledge and love of God through our Savior, Jesus Christ. With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that Molly, Kate, and Max, surrounded by steadfast love, may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. I'm so sorry to have to do the back and forth, but at least you got to see the polka dots under my white robe. <laughs> well, stand now, friends, if you are able, as we offer our call to worship. We love you, Lord, and we want to honor your name. Help us listen to the Holy Spirit's teaching. We need you, Lord, and long to be in your presence. Help us follow the Holy Spirit's leading. We see you, Lord, in the beauty of this place. Help us worship you in the Spirit and in truth.
friends, please remain standing as we affirm together what we believe. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day, and appeared first to the women, then to Peter and the Twelve, then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the Anointed One of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the Church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen. already standing, what a perfect opportunity to turn to your neighbor, someone behind you or next to you, and offer them the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be upon you. because we love one another. And now, if you will, friends, join me as we lift up our hearts to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you praising you because you are so worthy of our praise. We come with grateful hearts that you are among us this morning, all around us, and even by the gift of the Holy Spirit inside us. And so we praise your holy and mighty name. And Father, we come to you, for some of us, with heavy hearts on this Mother's Day. It is not always a happy day. 
There are those among us who did not have a wonderful mother. Emotionally unavailable is what some of us understood them to be. Or perhaps they struggled with an addiction. Perhaps they were not there at all. And so on this day, we lift up to you that pain, Lord, and that brokenness and those difficult memories. And Lord, we ask you to just give us peace. And Father, for those of us who are mothers and feel like less than wonderful mothers, maybe just some days, maybe most days, oh, Father, hear our hearts. We did what we could, Lord. In all the ways that we failed you and that we failed our children, forgive us, Lord. Give us the comfort and peace that only you can provide through your spirit. Oh, and Lord, for some, this is such a hard day because they aren't mothers and wish they could be. And there's so many reasons why we can't be, Lord. Individual to each woman, but so difficult. Will you comfort that woman's heart this day? Assure her that she is loved by you and valued by you, that she is not less than in any way, shape, or form, that she is precious to you. And Father, for those of us who had wonderful mothers, but they're gone, may everything we do and think this day honor them, not with flowers and cards, Lord, but with warm memories and kind words from our lips. Father, we are grateful that we can come to you whole or broken, and you, you will love us and care for us and strengthen us by the power of the Spirit. And so, Father, we yield this day to you. It is truly your day. It is the Lord's day. And so it is you who is high and lifted up and whom we most want to honor this day. And now following the example of our Lord Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. As Liz mentioned earlier in the service, this is Have a Heart for Senior Sunday in the United Methodist Churches in Kentucky. I'm Craig Reynolds, and I'm the chairman of the board of directors at Wesley Manor. As many of you probably already know, Wesley Manor is the United Methodist Retirement Community, founded in 1963 and located in southern Jefferson County. This year, we're celebrating our 60th anniversary, highlighted by a concert by the Monarchs on June the 10th. Now, if you're anywhere near my age and grew up in Louisville, then I'm sure you're probably familiar with the Monarchs' music. However, I've digressed a little bit here. Anyway, Wesley Manor provides a full continuum of senior living care, from independent patio homes to assisted living apartments, to memory care services, to skilled nursing care. Providing all of this in a loving Christian community, 
to our 173 residents at Wesley Manor is the primary focus of a dedicated and professional staff. To carry out this commitment, Wesley Manor has created a, what we call our Charitable Care Ministry. This program allows for a resident to remain in their home even though they have exhausted all of their financial resources. And you can imagine uh, this ministry requires continuous fundraising in order to replenish the funds that we expend for charitable care. And unfortunately, despite the fact that Wesley Manor is a mission of the United Methodist Church, we receive absolutely no funding whatsoever from the Kentucky Conference. Therefore, you may ask yourself, is providing charitable care a worthwhile effort? And to those members uh, at Wesley Manor who are on charitable care and their families, the answer has always been a resounding yes. One such resident is Jan. She, has, she is 89 years old and has been living at Wesley Manor in assisted living since 2016. She has developed many friendships over the years since she has been there. She loves to talk with anyone who will stop by her apartment and just chat with her. She has a great sense of humor and always has a smile for all the other residents and for staff as well. She loves to walk outdoors and the Wesley Manor grounds provide an ample space for her daily walks. She has three children, but unfortunately, only one of them lives in the metropolitan area and can visit her regularly. She has been a, on charitable care for two and a half years and is so grateful to Wesley Manor for providing, uh, <clears throat> providing her a home that she knows will always be there. But she's also very grateful for folks like you all who, with your fundraising, uh, for your funding, uh, provide the charitable care dollars that enable the residents to benefit from this program. So with Jan in mind, I encourage you to give prayerfully and generously towards the Wesley Manor Charitable Care Program today. 100% of your donation will be tax deductible. You will find in the pew racks in front of you either a green or a yellow envelope in which you can place your donation and then put it in the offering plate once it's passed. However, if you're not in a position to make a donation today, that's fine. May I suggest that you take one of these envelopes home with you and return it next week with your donation. So on behalf of the entire Wesley Manor family, I want to sincerely thank you for your continued unselfish support of our residents on charitable care. Again, thanks so much. Our ushers are invited to come forward now for our time of offering. For our friends online, you're welcome to use the QR code on your screen. A reminder for children and parents during the doxology, our kids will come down front and leave with their leaders who will bring them back, we promise, during the closing hymn. You'll also find a fellowship pad right there at the end of your pew. Kindly fill it out with first and last names of everybody in your group and then pass it on to your neighbor. I hope you'll find useful the uh, insert in your bulletin. It provides a step-by-step -step through the sermon today, and on the back is a Bible study with one verse for each day this week, so you can spend a few minutes each day in God's Word. And now, may God bless and multiply the gifts of His people.
Loving God, we are grateful for the gift of this day, and we acknowledge here and now that every good thing we have is a gift from your loving hand. So receive these gifts as tokens of our gratitude and use them to further your cause and kingdom. Amen. Good morning, and happy Blessed Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Today's scripture is a reading from the Gospel according to John. Listen for the Word of God. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is a spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and will reveal myself to them. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And thank you, Gary, for that wonderful reading of the gospel lesson, and good morning, Christ Church family and friends. What a joy it is to be with everyone this morning, whether you're joining us online or or joining us uh, here in person as well. I also want to wish those among us who are our mothers and those who have served as mothers among us a a blessed day as well. Let's join our hearts in prayer as we continue in worship. Gracious and loving God, we are indeed grateful for all that you've already had for us today through song and silence and prayer and the waters of baptism, to your word as it's been read the music as it has been offered in faith and in beauty. Now as we continue, Lord, we pray the words of my mouth, the meditation of all our hearts would be pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer, and all of God's people said, amen. Amen. You know, when you think about it, the sooner, the sooner we, we all get to more fully loving God and each other, the sooner our lives in this world will look more like the kingdom of God. Now, that's easy to say, and yes, thank you for the amen. Those are always welcome. It's easy to say that. It's simple to say that. It's much harder to do that, isn't it? Uh, I, I stand before you as somebody who has been loved when I've been hard to love. I'm so glad my wife didn't shout amen from in the back here or any of my children today. Uh, one a- example of that was early in my ministry. I'd been serving for a number of years, but uh, I was uh, appointed to serve as an associate pastor in one of our churches in, in, here in Kentucky, and I, I was excited about this appointment. I thought I was bringing some good experience into that appointment. I, I loved and admired the, the, the senior pastor that I was going to be serving under, and I was just grateful for the opportunity and, and blessed and flattered that that he'd, he'd come to me and invited me to be on his staff and in that church, and oh my goodness, what, a, what an opportunity it was. And, and I got to that church, and I realized after about 15 minutes that our style, the senior pastor and myself, our style of leadership and our style of servanthood, while they were both very valid and lovely, were very different. And I found myself never, never criticizing him inwardly or outwardly or in any way uh, undermining privately or publicly his, his leadership among us, but I think subconsciously I was resisting his mentorship of me at times. And after about six months of us serving together, he called me into his office, and in such a delightful and wonderful Christian way. He let me know that there were times where I could be a real pain in his backside. (laughs) You know, I was not easy to love for a season. And this man loved me, and he served me, and he did mentor me. And over time became someone who was an advocate for my ministry and a trusted friend who I could go to for guidance and advice. 
I am in part, I am, maybe I am wholly who I am because of people like that. I'm the kind of pastor I am because people have loved me when I'm hard to love. I, I mention that today because we're continuing the message series, What Do We Do Now? And it's, a, it's an Easter season kind of message because those first followers of Jesus, those first followers of Jesus, when Jesus died and when he rose from the dead, they would have had to somehow ask and answer that question, well, what do we do now? What, what does it mean that he has, that he has died and that he's, that he's raised from the dead? And, and even those of us who now, here and now, are contemporary followers of Jesus, we've had Easter Sunday. We're in this season of Easter right now, and we say things like we are a resurrection people. We live in the power of the resurrection, but what does that really mean? What do we do now? Well, last week's scripture in John 14, and as we pick up right where we left off last week with, with the very next verse, it clearly answers that question. And this, of course, is Jesus not in a post-resurrection uh, appearance. This is before He was arrested and died and, and rose from the dead. This is called the upper room discourse. He's with His disciples in a tender moment, in a moment where they're agitated and they're upset because Jesus has let them know that He is, uh, that, that he is about to be taken away from them, that he is soon going to die. He has also let them know that one of them is going to betray him. He has let them know that Peter is going to deny him three times before the rooster crows. They're upset, and understandably so. This is a private, intimate moment. It's a tender moment for Jesus and his disciples in the midst of, of all of, of this. This passage is so often appropriately used in, in funerals, but make no mistake, friends, this this passage and these words of Jesus, they're not for, for the dead and, and the dying. It's for life and the living is what these words are. And they answer the question, what do we do now in this way? Jesus says in the passage we heard last week, I'll remind us of it, He talked about the works that He did, and He said, you will do even greater works than these. What do we do now? Well, friends, as an Easter people, as a people who live in light of the resurrection, as a people who ask the question, well, what do we do now that Jesus is raised from the dead? The answer is right here in John 14. It's get with Jesus and each other and do even greater works than these. Jesus, of course, was talking about the works that He did, the way He taught, and the way He uh, proclaimed the good news of God's love, the the healings and the feeding and the acts of mercy. And, and, and what he's really talking about there is, is the people that would follow after him now that he was going to be taken away from them. And, and, and what would happen throughout the, the ages as it has happened through his body of the church, how we, empowered by the Spirit of God, blessed by the presence of Christ, do even greater works than these through how we share the good news and love of God in Christ. Yeah, Christ, he, he healed however many people He healed, and it was a beautiful thing to behold in the Gospels. But the church over, over the centuries, through hospitals and ministries, have healed untold numbers of people. Jesus, of course, fed thousands of people, miraculously so. Think of all the acts of mercy and, and all the ways in which the church throughout the ages have fed people in their communities. You, you get the idea of doing even greater works than these as a resurrection people. And as we, as we look in the, in the Scriptures today, as we, as we pick right up again at verse 15 uh, and continuing, uh, we, we see that we, we go about doing even greater works than these in three ways that I'll mention briefly as I can this morning. And, and, and they are these through loving and obeying, through receiving and being led by the Holy Spirit, and by experiencing fellowship with the Trinity, God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. At verse 15, uh, we're, we, we hear Jesus say, if you, if you love me, you will keep my, my commandments. There were a, a lot of commandments that Jesus uh, was uh, in the midst of as uh, a, a Jewish rabbi in the first century and in Palestine, there were 613 laws from Hebrew Scripture, and Jesus would have known every single one of them very well. And 
Theologically, when we think about how John cast Jesus in the very beginning of his gospel, he talks about in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus, the Word made flesh. He didn't just understand the law. He didn't just understand covenant and what that meant. He was the author of the law. And so much of his ministry was trying to uncover and expose the heart of God behind covenant and law. And it pointed to a God who is with us and for us and loves us. He stirred up quite a bit of controversy in some of his teaching around this, particularly around things like Sabbath keeping and, and when it was appropriate to, to heal or, or, or do some kind of a, of a miracle when somebody was in need of, of food or, or healing themselves. But he was pointing to the heart of God. And somebody came up to Jesus at one point and asked him, what's the, what's the greatest of the laws? And he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is like it. He said, love your neighbor as yourself. We see a great example of the importance and the primacy of love when it pertains to those of us who are following after Christ, who in any way want to be about this movement that Christ has called us to be a part of. In Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, many people refer to it, uh, have referred to it as, as the love poem. You've heard it. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not, love does not envy. You know, that, uh, that passage, that chapter of Scripture, it wasn't written for weddings, although it's often shared in weddings, and appropriately so. That passage of Scripture was actually written for the church, and it was, and it was written in relationship to a, a, a church that was, that was divided and struggling. And part of the reason they were struggling is because they were so phenomenally spiritually gifted. And if you look at chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, you, you hear about those gifts and how they're celebrated and how they're wonderful. And that's where Paul comes to 13, and he talks about being a crashing symbol or just somebody beating on a gong without love. That's what you sound like. Or if you have faith enough to move mountains, if you don't have love, it, it amounts to nothing. If you're willing to give your whole body up to somehow be martyred or destroyed, but you do it without love, it amounts to nothing. Jesus calls us to the very core of love. And when He talks about obeying His commands, the, the core and the central command is to love God and to love others. When we're faithful to that, we're faithful to this accomplishing more, even more than, uh, than, than we could ever imagine in, in and through the church. Also, when we look at the Holy Spirit, Jesus says in the very, very next verse that He's uh, going, to, um, going to send your advocate to be with you forever the Spirit of truth. He's, of course, talking about the Holy Spirit here. Jesus uh, came to them, and He, he breathed peace onto them. Uh, this promise of this advocate, this, this Spirit of truth, it was powerfully poured out on the disciples uh, as they were, were gathered in, in the upper room, and they were ready to go and fulfill the, the great commission that Jesus gave them to, to take the gospel to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the very ends of the, of the world. That promise that Jesus gave them, that He would be with them to the very end of the age, it was made possible by this promise of the Holy Spirit. But He told them to go, but He said, before you go, pray <laughs> and wait. And it was in the waiting in Acts chapter 2 where we see the Holy Spirit being poured out on the disciples of them sharing a Christ, a Christ crucified and risen, calling people to turn away from their sins and more fully to God. And we're told they were cut to the heart by that message, that they, uh, that they were baptized, that the church was born that day with, with thousands of people. A new community had been formed around Christ because of this empowerment of the Spirit. And this very Spirit is still with us and around us and in us. Jesus says this advocate, this Spirit, will not just be with us, but will be in us. And that's important because of what else Jesus says in, in the next verse here. He talks about the Father is in me, and I am in the Father, and I am in you. And He's already told us that the Spirit is with us and in us as well. And that's important. That's real important. 
If you go back to the creation narratives in Genesis 1 and, and 2, and you see God creating the world, I always had this beautiful image when I read, and I was reading through them again this week, you know, that God created, God created. It's like a master artist is painting something beautiful on a canvas and then stepping back and saying, wow, that's good. And that's what God is doing when God's creating the heavens and the earth and you and you and you. God was creating, including people, and stepping back and saying, that's very good. That's original blessing. The blessedness that we have of being created by God in the image and likeness of God. Now, we know that everything was good in that story until it wasn't so good. <laughs> in, in the narrative, Adam and, and Eve rebelling against, uh, against, uh, against God and and exposing our, our propensity for sin and, and brokenness. And, and I mention that, I mention that, because what we see coming together in John's gospel, in this passage right here, as Jesus is talking about the Spirit being in us, about He being in us and we being in Him, and He and the Father being together and one, we, as people who were formed in the image and likeness of God, who are simultaneously blessed and good, but also broken, that we are being healed in this by the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And I don't know if I've ever thought about it until this week as I was studying the Scriptures that the, the Trinity is being openly talked about here. I'm, I'm going to try to do a Trinity Sunday this year. We'll stay tuned. We'll see how it works out because we don't have the right language to really adequately express the truth of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but we keep seeing it in Scripture, and you see it in Scripture here, and what it really points to is a three-in-one God who is perfectly in communion with one's self. But maybe my new thought here is that it seems like when you read John chapter 14, that we are so tenderly invited into deep fellowship with our God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are so tenderly invited into the community that God has created for us and for God's self and has been established even more clearly and strongly in and through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. We are called as people who are created in the image and likeness of God, to, who yearn for community, to be in the ultimate community, the community around Jesus, and the community of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Friends, when we're faithful to that calling, all of these callings that Jesus is issuing here, well, that's when we experience, that's when we see even greater works than these. But for me, it still always comes back to this primacy of God's love for us and how we share and show that for others. I heard a quote that I'll share with you today. It's, uh, the source is unknown, and we've, we've tried to find the source, but here's the quote. I'm going to try to get it right. It pertains to, to motherhood, and, and here's the quote. Motherhood is the exquisite inconvenience, the exquisite inconvenience of being everything to someone. The exquisite inconvenience of being everything to someone. I don't know if that's true or not. It sounds kind of true. And I don't know if it's desirable or even possible to be everything for someone. But I know this. I can be something for everyone. And what that something is, is someone who has received the love of God and wants to share that with every single human being that comes in front of me. Friends, that's living into our mission, I think, of becoming living proof of God's love, one person at a time. Will you pray with me and let this prayer, let this prayer be our invitation to Christian discipleship. Gracious God, Lord, help us to be that loving presence for those around us. Lord, help us to ask the question, who are you calling us to love right now? Lord, if anyone else in the sanctuary is like me today, the chances are you're calling us to love someone who's maybe just being a little bit hard to love these days. Lord, make us so aware in this moment of your great love for us in Jesus. 
Make us so aware of how you redeem us in him, how you call us to follow, and how you enable us as a resurrection people to do even greater works than these. Thank you for the ones that have already happened and for the ones that are, that are happening even now. Bless us on this day, Lord. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Sending forth today, it is my joy today to welcome Ernie and Barbara Strockstyle into the Christ Church family by way of transfer from the St. Matthew's Baptist Church. And, uh, and also, Ernie's a singer, by the way. You were singing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can't hide from it. Dan's right here. He knows now, our choir director. So, uh, and Barbara, too. So, as members of Christ Universal Church, 
Will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, say, I will. And as a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, say, I will. Friends, I would also want you to know that uh, Ruth Wilder also uh, became a member of Christ Church United Methodist earlier this week. Ruth is part of our online community, so we welcome her today as well. Would you extend your hands as we pray for the truck stops? May the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. And all God's people said, Amen. You can welcome, I'll just ask them to remain up front, you can welcome them, greet them uh, as, we, as we leave today. Friends, as you go forth from here today, go forth in the love of God the Father, the grace of His Son, Jesus the Christ. Go forth in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Friends, we've come to church. We are the church. We've been blessed being church today. Now it's time for us to get out of here and be church for everybody else. Go in peace. Amen.